Hey guys, Professor Bell, Comic Book University, and we're going to be talking about a spotlight on story on magic, Storm and Ileana Rasputin. Now, this was a four-part limited series that came out way back in December of 1983. Now, uh, each successive month came out, so uh, January, February, March of 84, and so on. But um, this story is basically the time that Ileana spent in limbo why she aged every time that you know you hear oh yeah she uh, she was in limbo for ever but it was like it was a couple of seconds for us so she aged in just a couple of seconds yeah she aged physically but mentally she aged a whole lot more and we're gonna seek to find out exactly why right now now let's take a look at who's involved in the creation of this story we got chris claremont of course of course why not he's the mastermind behind all of it and drawing the the pencils for issues number uh, one, two, and four is John Buscema. Now, Ron Friends, for whatever reason, I had to step in to do issue number three. I don't know why. Not my business. <laughs> if you guys do have some clue as to why that happened, some inkling, please, by all means, let me know. And if there's a, we're talking about inkling here. How about the inker? We got Tom Palmer. <laughs> so uh, moving on, Glennis Wayne, she's back. Colors, that's right. She did a whole bunch of work for the New Mutants and she was doing this as well. And likewise, back on letters, Tom Orzakowski. Now, uh, rounding this out, we got Louise Jones at the time. Later, she would be called Louise Simonson. That's right. Walt Simonson's wife uh, was actually editing this story. So we're going to begin issue number one, four issue limited series. And uh, we start off with uh, she's already out of limbo. She's already walking around. You can see she's got the little uh, uh, locket in her hand. Now, that locket actually has roots back in Belasco's first appearance in Kazar, Kazar the Savage, issue number 11 and more appropriately 12. <laughs> but uh, this is actually a story and we're not going to go back to that story. There is so much backstory in this four issue limited series. I swear to God, I could keep and front story. Uh, stories that go forward as well. I could be here for three hours just talking about all the stories that wrap into each other. Anyway, so she's looking at this locket that has three little bloodstones in it. Now, these are new bloodstones, mind you. There were original bloodstones prior to this. So, little girl lost. That's what this is. And we start off with, what the heck is this? We start off with a, a big double page spread of, is that two storms? There's two versions of Storm. One of them is praying. One of them is casting magic. What the heck is this? Nobody's even casting weather control. Okay, there's something up here. And Belasco, and that's Sim from uh, from the Inferno storyline. Great storyline. We're going to get to there soon. Um, what the heck is going on here? Oh, wait. What's this all the way in the bottom? Oh, for crying out loud. For a more detailed account, go to... Uh, go figure it out on, on, on X-Men, issue number 160. Luis... Come on, man. Okay, fine. So we're going to go back in time 18 months prior to this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I said that uh, we'd be here all day if, if I were to go back to all the stories. Unfortunately, I do have to go back to some of the stories and just particularly this one. So let's get this one kind of out of the way first. X-Men issue number 160. This is August of 1982. And oh, look, Chris Claremont is on it. <laughs> More than that, uh, Brent Anderson is doing the pencils. And over on Inks, we've got Bob uh, we, we ask, Yeah, Weasek. Dude, Bob, seriously, man, just give me a give me a breakdown how to pronounce your name. Anyway, uh, hey, Glynis, you're back. Back on colors. Beautiful. And oh, look, Tom Orzakowski also on letters. That's just great. And there's Louise Jones slash Simonson. She's back there in editing. And oh, look at this. Danny Fingeroth, he's also editing. It's not even like assistant editing. You actually have two editors on this because they knew this was going to be a huge storyline. That, Well, at least that's my guess. I, I have to take my own close estimation. So um, we're going to look at Shoots and Ladders, X-Men issue number 160. Okay, so we can see the X-Men training, and they're not actually in the danger room. They're just on their own out in this uh, little paradise island. I'm not going back any further than this, guys. So um, they're actually really tired. They were just battling uh, Dracula, the issue prior to this. Huge thing. Go and check out Bloodstorm, explained in a minute to understand why Storm became a vampire. 
in another universe and now is over here in the current 616 universe in the pages of X-Men Blue as of 2018, this January 2018, I'm doing the story. And oh, look at this. There's somebody with a, a left hand staring. Now I'm making that joke because Belasco actually only has a left hand. A lot of people don't uh, recognize that. They actually hit it very well. I remember when I was a kid, I had no idea. And it wasn't until I got much older and I'm talking with some people like, you notice he only had a left hand. And then going back and reading the, the Savage uh, Kazar issue number 29, they actually show, and that actually cross sects with issue number four of this story that we're going to be reading the uh, magic one through four issues. He actually only has a left hand. His right arm was lost due to a special magical sword that is actually able to cause him harm and possibly kill him. Blasco is an immortal. And we will get into Blasco explained in a minute. And for many of you, for most of you, I imagine, uh, that's that. Um, tale will already exist but for right now at the time of me making this just it'll happen so he's got that locket that Ileana was looking at and oh gee look at that <laughs> it's actually it actually looks full but it's really empty so uh that's just the housing for those uh bloodstones uh it was full full once before with different bloodstones but Regardless, so these guys are training and Ileana is there watching them and all of a sudden this voice, it's actually Belasco calling to her. So she goes and she's going to go forward and she's going to uh, go off into these ruins. They haven't actually explored the entirety of this island as of yet. So um, Kitty Pride at one point is going to see her slipping off and she's going to slip off as well and she's going to go and follow her. Now they both get taken away by some kind of a, a stepping disc. Uh, Kitty Pride actually makes reference to that. That's from Larry Niven's Ringworld sto uh, stories, this stepping disc idea. So there you go. That's exactly where it came from. That's why they call it as such. And Kitty Pride actually came up with the name. And she is credited by Ileana much later. So uh, anyway, Storm is going to be naked a lot in this story and the next story we're going to be reading. Just I, I hope that, you know, uh, an absolutely gorgeous woman taking off her clothes and bathing often doesn't bother you because it happens a lot here. So um, Storm is talking about how she just got finished, you know, battling off Dracula. Now she's really tired. She's sweating. She's trying to, you know, make these these uh, weather tempests and whatnot. So she says, you know what? I think Nightcrawler gives Jess and hey, why don't you take a little shower? You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a perv. And you'll see just how much a perv he is later in the future, so, so to speak. So she does. She takes off her clothes and she causes a little rainstorm just around herself. She's like, hey, anybody else want to be in a rainstorm? Uh, no, no, we're good. So it's just her. And she has no problems, uh, you know, stripping to the buff. So anyway, um, eventually Wolverine or all the all the X-Men will realize, hey, you know, Kitty's gone. So is Ileana. What's going on? You know, Colossus is a little sister. Hey, what's up? So they start going after and, and, and Logan is actually going to track them to where they're supposed to be. And they find, wind up falling into these stepping disks as well. So this island is a great um, transport into limbo and great is probably not the best word for it but anyway anything where limbo is involved so kitty pride finds herself in limbo she doesn't know she's actually there yet and she sees nightcrawler hey nightcrawler what's up buddy and he says she's like oh come i'm so happy to see you even though he's wearing these weird clothes and she gives him a hug and he hugs her boob yeah, mind you, she's only like 14 at this point, so there's so much child endangerment going on here. In the meantime, like, she phases. She's like, oh, my God, Kurt, you know, how could you touch me like that? He totally cops a feel. Totally cops a feel. And, you see, you know, phases right through her. <laughs> and uh, what do you call it? She's like, what's going on? And he's like, hey, you know, if you're really happy to see me, why don't you show me? Oh, wow, this is freaky. Okay. So she's going to run away from this version of Kurt. And make no mistake, this is actually Kurt. It's just Kurt who is seriously corrupted over a ridiculously long lifetime and by Belasco, who she winds up running right into as she's trying to escape. She runs right into Belasco. And um, he explains, yeah, this is really Kurt. I've corrupted him, the, you know, for a long time. Hey, deal with it. And he's gone. He is gone. Like, Kurt is gone. There's no redemption for this poor son of a gun, son of a gun. So, um, you know, he's just like, you know, hey, I'm Belasco, what's up? And we don't get to see what happens yet. First, you're going to see that uh, Storm and, and Colossus are together. And then she's going to get attacked by some tentacle beast. Yeah, Chris Claremont, <laughs> just, I'm just saying, like, he was awesome. But at the same time, now that we're older, 
this is this is some seriously heavy stuff in here. Like this guy reads way too much manga. <laughs> so anyway, maybe he actually created the manga genre. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, at some point she winds up getting these extra powers, uh, the powers of the other X Men who would come down here, uh, Colossus and Wolverine and uh, Nightcrawler, including her own, and she's able to fight off this beast. In the meantime, um, what do you call it? She, uh, um, uh, Shadow Cat, she gets encased in this little magical thing, <laughs> this, this magical um, uh, crystal. And you see this being called Sim. And Sim comes over and he sees the bones, the adamantium laced bones of Wolverine. And he reaches down to these bones. He's like, huh, you know, I was just here a moment ago and there was meat on these bones. I was hoping to have a feast, but I guess somebody else came along and ate Logan. So we don't find out here exactly what happened there. But um, Sim does reach down and he plucks off one of the um, the adamantium claws, the adamantium laced claws. At the, at the time, we think they're just adamantium. This is way back in the day. But now we find out they're adamantium laced, that he actually had a bone housing there. So um, he just pulls it off and he starts picking his teeth. Now, mind you, I said pull it off. I'm just leading you into this. He actually breaks it off. He snaps the adamantium right in the middle. There's no messing with the housing or anything like that. He literally reaches down. Brink, you can see clearly, he breaks the adamantium and picks it up. Sim is an unbelievable, godlike, supreme powerhouse of a demon down in limbo. He is, you do not mess with Sim. His only weakness is to magic. Wolverine's claws aren't hurting him. Colossus's punches ain't hurting him. Nobody's hurting him. Only magic. And that's why he's afraid of Belasco. And you'll see uh, in the future where exactly we go with that. And he actually goes and starts picking his teeth. Just to give you an idea, he's not just strong, he's nigh invulnerable. He starts picking his teeth with an adamantium claw. Absolutely insane. So Belasco's like, oh, Kitty, does it scare you? Does it freak you out to see the skeleton of your, your former teammate? Oh, well, perhaps you'd like to see your own skeleton. Actually pulls the skeleton out. Now, this is just like a minor thing. It's whatever. It's just to show his power and how freaky he is. The skeleton is moving. Uh, and she can technically move both. You know, they, uh, he says, if you actually come, if your body comes out of that uh, magical encasing en I've got you in, you will die. The only thing keeping you alive is that. But meanwhile, her skeleton is out. And you'll see in several parts of the comic book, if you go and read it, pick up the graphic novel, the trade paperback, she's actually able to move around as the skeleton. It's freaky. She can't talk, but she can wave and do all sorts of freaky things. It's, wow, messed up. Anyway, so um, this is also fairly important because, uh, go figure, I don't think there's any coincidence. There is a second, it's not a second volume, but there is another Ileana uh, Rasputin, another magic. It's actually called Magic, uh, issue number one through four, not Magic Ilya uh, Storm and Ileana. So uh, a little bit different. Anyway, this happens right at the end of the Dark Sun storyline uh, that involved the X-Men. And in that Dark Sun actual storyline, we get to see that Kitty Pride had something placed in her when the skeleton was removed. Belasco actually decided to mess with her a little bit more by removing her skeleton. So you can see the story is just all overarching, and it's great. It's absolutely fantastic. Anyway, this is when Belasco gives his ex-wife's uh, locket to Ileana. He plans on using her for whatever purposes. Now, Nightcrawler is looking over top, and he's like, hey, I see this. You know, I'm going to get revenge. I'm going to figure out what's going on. Over in the rest of the universe, this limbo plane of existence, uh, Logan, excuse me, I'm just moving my notes to the side. Logan is uh, sitting, is walking around and he sees, he smells Colossus up ahead. He goes up and it's actually a much older version of Colossus. The chest is completely caved in. This guy is dead. He's been dead for a while too. And he's like, what the heck could have done this to Petey? And all of a sudden, Sim shows up grabs him dead in the chest, throws him, his shirt rips off, so you can see, you know, tough, hairy Logan. Anyway, um, Logan goes and jumps back, but Sim is so fast that while Logan is mid-leap for his face, he clunks him on the head, clud, knocks him clean out, knocks him unconscious. Um, at, at one point, Colossus is, is, is coming around the corner, but just as uh, Sim is about to step on his head, and mind you, he's able to break adamantium. So he's about to step on Logan's head. Yeah, this is probably a death blow. But just as he as he stomps on the head, one of the stepping discs appears. 
and it takes him away someplace. Someplace, some time. Yeah, exactly. So Colossus didn't have to show up at this point, but he does. He shows up and he's like, hey, what's going on? I'm going to kick your sorry butt. Yeah, the person who did this to the dead Colossus sitting right over there, which Colossus sees, mind you, is like, uh, is that me? <laughs> uh, is actually Sim. So Sim is not even remotely interested in this. He's like, okay, listen, buddy, here's what's going to happen. You're going to surrender and I'm going to kill you nice and quickly. Otherwise, we're going to drag this out and it's going to hurt really, really bad. Yeah, Jarrett Leto style. So anyways, Klaus is like, I'm not going to be a time. I'm going to kick your butt. He's like, yeah, blustering ain't going to help, buddy. He runs up and just like decks him and just starts beating the snot out of him. The only thing that actually saves Petey is Wolverine coming back. And Wolverine just goes right at him, claws him. He's, he's like sticks him hard with both claws. And he just starts slicing at him. But Sim goes and hits him back. And he's got no chance, none. He's like, dude, he's not even cut. This is disgusting. So, um, Tavrich, uh, Petey, he, uh, Colossus, he shows up behind him. He's like, I hate kicking somebody in the back, you know, blindsiding him. Shut up, dude. You die otherwise. Kicks him in the, the lower spine, sends him through a stepping disc. Good for him. Yeah. Wolverine, you know, of course, with his tracking abilities, he's able to go back and find where, uh, where he was just at. So anyway, uh, we get to see all this, this different crazy stuff that's happening, past, present, future, all that nonsense. And at one point, we're going to see that um, uh, Storm was actually saved. You know, this, this extra power that was given to her was given to her through magic by herself, an older version of herself. I'm going to call her old old woman Storm. All right, we got old man Logan. We got old man uh, Thanos currently in the comics as I'm reading in 2017. Excuse me, 2018, January. And now we got old old woman Storm, long before any of them got old. <laughs> so uh, there she is, and she's got magical abilities. And she gives her new clothes. Storm decides to go skinny dipping in the pool that's right there. And yeah, just deal with it, man. Deal with it. I, I did. <laughs> so um, she gives her like some nice jewelry and all that stuff. And she's, and she's like, okay, go off and kick some booty. So they go out, and uh, one thing comes to another, and... Um, Everybody's able to get at the same time to where uh, Belasco is. They're able to get Ileana. They're trying to get away. St uh, st old woman Storm jumps in and says, no, I will not let you. And she whoa, starts casting incredible amounts of magic. And she says, Storm, younger me, that necklace I gave you has the ability to get you back home. So use it. <laughs> so she starts praying. Yum, 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 and she's try to get away. This is where the story, previous story, uh, Storm and Ileana in Magic issue number one of four actually starts. Yeah. So she's trying to leave and um, uh, they're, they're all trying to leave. Uh, Colossus has Ileana in her hands, but Belasco is able to teleport past Stor uh, old woman Storm's, old woman Aurora's uh, defenses, excuse me, and one-handed yanks her right out of Petey's hands. He's like, uh, I wasn't expecting that. So Kitty Pride reaches over and grabs her. Uh, yeah, her skeleton gets put back in by old woman storm and they start teleporting out. They're all through the portal, but, uh, Kitty, she's still got her hands through the portal. She can't see because she's being held back. She can't even put her head in to see what's going on, but she starts pulling, but she loses her for the briefest of seconds and then grabs her again. She's like, oh, I got something, pulls her through and it is Ileana. But it's 14-year-old, 13-year-old, but they explain later on she's on the cusp of 14. So she was uh, almost seven when they left her. And then that brief second where they lost her and grabbed her again, she was almost 14. Seven full years have passed. That's nuts. That's nuts. So... This so now we're gonna break into and you know she has a nightmare whatever and uh, Petey Tavarich goes in there Rasputin I know and uh, goes in there and you know sits down with her and comforts her let her sleep and guards her for the night really cute meanwhile Belasco is sitting there he's like I've st you know you've still got that locket and I'm still looking forward to what's going on so three soldier uh, not soldier excuse me three bloodstones are filled so now we're gonna go eighteen months in the future of real time yeah. They made us wait 18 months from uh, August of 1982 to this December of 1983. They actually made us wait 18 months to see this freaking story go through. Dude, not even cool. 
Not even remotely. Anyway, uh, New Mutants issue number 14 was out at around this time. So give you an idea, that's when Magic had already joined up. She had her soul sword and her stepping discs, and we didn't know exactly what else she could do. Anyway, so back into this story proper. We're going to see that uh, Ileana is, you know, looking at her, her stuff. She, she's remembering all this other stuff that happened. And here's what happens at this point. Uh, Belasco did get her. And then he's, you know, looking at her, he's like, uh, you know, ha, I'm, I'm going to do some cool magic with you. And Aurora's like, no, I can't let you, old woman Aurora. And she goes and casts her magic and, and uh, uh, what do you call it? She gets blasted and she's like, you know, Belasco's like, oh, listen, you're going to calm down, all right? And you can always rejoin me again. Whoa, rejoin me? Not cool, dude. Not cool. So she says, yeah, uh, I'm not going to rejoin you again. He's like, all right, whatever. You're going to watch this. So he goes and he basically... Uh, pulls Ileana's spirit out, ages it, morphs it, and and forms what's called the Dark Child. That's right. And guys, check out uh, Ileana Rasputin, or Magic, explained in a minute, to find out more about the Dark Child and all that good stuff. Uh, not good for her, mind you. So uh, just see what she could do. So uh, she he takes this ability and immediately forms one of those bloodstones and puts it in the locket. Yeah. Uh, no mortal hand can remove the bloodstone, what's it's been in there. So there's that. And to find out more about what he could do, just basically this is what's going to bring in the elder gods for, that were banished into the other universe. And to find out more about that, that's to go back and look at a lot of really old comic books. Um, Serpent, uh, The Serpent Crown Affair is actually a really good way to uh, to figure out how that, that it all happened. But for the most part, Elder Gods were bat, uh, banished themselves. They couldn't come back into the Prime Material Plane. If they did, uh, Atom would destroy them. That's uh, Amon Ra, basically. He would have absolutely wasted them. So, no. <laughs> and, and you can call him Demogorgon, for the most part. Uh, he would have absolutely destroyed them and, and taken their essence and sprinkled it around the, the universe. So, Or, excuse me, around the, the world, the Earth, at least. So anyway, these guys were looking for a way to come back into the world, and Belasco was supposed to be able to do that. This was in Kazar, uh, issue number 11 and 12, for the most part. And I will do a spotlight and story on those. Believe that. That's actually the first appearance of Belasco. So uh, he, he's able to form the Dark Child This is uh, and puts his his taint inside of her. Yeah, no no more comments like that, please. We got enough of stars. She's still going to get naked. Uh, as old as she is, she's still going to do all that. So anyway... Um, he puts the, uh, uh, he basically puts his evil inside of her and takes whatever she's got of power, of her potential, of her future, and puts it into this locket as a, a bloodstone. So he then turns around and like gives gives Aurora a really good blast and says, "Why don't you think about that?" Now she's potentially going to die here, but all of a sudden, Cat shows up. That's right. You saw the old man dead version of Colossus. You saw the old uh, pervy version of Nightcrawler. Um, you didn't really see a whole lot of, uh, Logan because he was just his bones <laughs> at that one point. Uh, but you didn't, and you saw, of course, old woman, um, uh, Storm, who you're seeing now. But what you didn't see was old person, Shadow Cat, older, older woman. Let's just call her womanly Shadow Cat. And she's calling herself Cat at this point. Now, Cat, <laughs> she, uh, she's basically... Uh, she's been turned into a cat. And you're going to see it later on, or they, they would explain it later on. She's actually been turned into very cat-like features by Belasco, uh, just playing around with her and whatnot. So this is the reason why, even if she did find a way to go back, she wouldn't have gone back because she figures, no way. Absolutely no way. I can't go back to them after what I've become. And she's become something of a murderer. She's got ninja stars all over, you know, shuriken, the Japanese uh, throwing stars all over her arms uh, that she can throw at any time. She's got a katana with her. She's got a, a knife. She's she's stacked with weapons, all right? She's stocked. So she goes after Belasco. She's like, I'm going to kill you. And he's like, yeah, no. He teleports away. And, um, yeah, she doesn't really have that much of a chance. So anyway, she's able to rescue Ileana and Storm. Mind you, every single thing that happens in here, for the most part, is Belasco's doing. He is essentially a master of time and space in, in limbo. Mind you, this is not the same limbo that Kang the Conqueror is in. It's a different plane that he calls limbo. That's the time stream. Anyway, so they go to this beautiful garden. And as it turns out, this is actually um, Storm's old old woman, uh, Aurora's. Um, this is her Sanctum Sanctorum. So, yeah, she's actually the Sorceress Supreme 
on Limbo. This is a completely different realm of existence than the Earth realm. Not just, you know, that general area, but that entire dimension that Earth is in in the 616 universe, where Doctor Strange is the Sorcerer Supreme there. She is the Sorceress Supreme here on Limbo. So she's got this beautiful garden. That's her sanctum. And basically, she's going to try and save Eliana. But she's wise. She's much older. She's very wise. She explains how um, she did have a sorceress origin in the past, but she went with her mutant origin instead and just really developed that when she went with uh, Professor X. But as she started to get older, it was harder for her to use her mutant powers. But the sorcery, that was able to happen anytime. And Belasco was able to harness that. And he actually made her a demon form also. He did a dark child version of her as well. So she's got a taint, of uh, this big um, uh, orb of evil, basically, inside of her that is Belasco's taint. Now, she um, it's actually much, much larger than what Ileana's is, which is fun. She's just recently gotten this. Anyway, she's sitting there trying to teach Ileana, hey, listen, check this out. Um, you don't have to obey what he does. You can you can use your magic, you can use all this stuff and avoid becoming what he is. Just do your own thing. And she takes her onto the astral plane to begin her lessons and says, look at this oak tree that I've got. It's beautiful, right? Look, I'm going to form... Uh, an egg horn. Look at that. Pretty cool, right? Plants don't exist in limbo, but I brought them into existence. I created life here. That's what I do as a Sorcerer Supreme. So Ileana tries to do it and she can't. It turns into this big blood splatter type thing. Destroys it. It's disgusting. Anyway, she tries to do what she can, but... Um, uh, and you can tell the storm really is tainted. She's got a lot of evil inside of her that she tries to meditate away. Anyway, she, you know, boom. Uh, they, they, they get out of their meditative trance, they're out of the astral plane as much as Ileana loves it, and it turns out that she's been studying for one entire year in the astral plane. That's right, one entire year. So now we're going to switch over to the next issue, issue number two of Magic, and uh, one heck of a cover, right? So uh, she's out, uh, what do you call it? We, it turns out at the very end of this, uh, the previous issue that Cat wasn't happy, and I love that she's Cat because eventually she becomes Shadow Cat, right? So Cat, Kitty Pride in the the far future of uh, Limbo, if there is such a thing, she goes and she kidnaps little Ileana, thinking, no, we've got to get out of here. She can't stay here at all. She's not going to be strong enough. She's weak. So she goes out there and she's basically going to say, listen, here's the deal. We need to get the heck out of here. Um, and, and I've got a way that maybe we could actually leave Limbo and go back to the Earth realm. I didn't want to do it by myself, but maybe with you I can do it. So, and Storm didn't want to go because she knew she's got to stay and help Ileana. So, anyway, they start leaving, but they come across a bunch of demons. Cat actually gets surprised, and she's almost killed. Ileana winds up stepping Disc away as she comes right in front of Colossus's body. Yeah, that old horde thing. And of course, who else is going to be there but Sim? And yeah, <laughs> evil, wicked evil. So uh, she's able to get away. Cat is able to stab his tail. It's like, whoa, so magical blade, cool. Anyway, they do wind up getting away. They, they go through one of the stepping discs that's on the wall. So they get away. They go out to this big open field. And uh, they go out and they start running. And Ileana's exhausted. She's like, oh my God, I thought that we could, you know, get out of here, but we can't. Where are we going anyway? She's just laying there. Mind you, she's a seven-year-old girl at this point, almost eight, right? Seven or eight-year-old. So um, Kat goes and says, you see those mountains way out there in the distance? Like, really far. She's like, yeah. She's like, we're going to go there. How are we going to get there? Run. That will take forever. She's like, yeah. So keep running. So they run, and she can't run anymore. Eliana literally, like, just, she's done. She's spent. And once she's spent, mm -mm, uh, they've got to they've fight because there are demons everywhere, even out in the open. So she's able to take down a, a two-headed saber-toothed tiger, and that's dinner. And they must eat a lot because there apparently wasn't enough for breakfast. But uh, instead of sleeping, Cat goes and makes a, a pelt, uh, goes and makes a clothes out of the pelt. That little nightgown that Magic is wearing, excuse me, that Ileana, she's Ileana right now, is wearing, isn't going to be good enough for this this Badlands. So she gives her these clothes. Like, here, put these on. So anyway, uh, she's like, come on, let's keep running. And on top of running, they're also going to train a lot. So they're going to do this training. They're going to try and, you know, get better. Uh, the, she needs her to be better, just uh, faster, stronger, quicker, 
all that good stuff. More agile, more dexterous, you know. And she's got to be good with uh, with weapons and hand to hand, everything. And she does. At first, she goes and gives Magic a, a cut on the cheek. Well, after quite some time of running and no sleep, pretty much, and just practicing with the weapon, uh, Cat actually goes and gives her the sword. After a while, Ileana gets so good that Kitty starts keeping the sword and gives her the knife instead. She still winds up getting a cut in return on Kitty's cheek. So she got really good while doing all that practice. Was this another year of travel? Maybe. You know, saying maybe it was two, who knows? But it was a lot of running, a lot of practice, a lot of everything. They get to the, the foothill of this huge mountain, and it turns out this is the citadel of Blasco. So she's like, listen, we're going to get up there, and we're going to see if we can't get home. So now we're going to break into the next issue. Uh, pre well, pretty soon. Anyway, um... Uh, towards the end of this issue, Nightcrawler is there, and she's got to fight off Nightcrawler. Uh, Nightcrawler is not having it, <laughs> not having it. He doesn't make this easy at all, but they are able to actually kill him because Kitty winds up phasing his foot into the floor, and then, by Kitty, I mean Cat, she doesn't want to be called Kitty anymore, um, and then impales him uh, through the chest, from the back right through through the chest. And they're going to go up and they're going to go into this big magical um, altar. That's where all of the most powerful of Belasco's spells are cast. So she, her plan now is we're going to try and phase. I got my phasing ability, you know, and with you, you know, confidence I'm going to build by having you with me. I'm going to try and phase through the time stream, through the dimension wall into, um, uh, into the, the regular material realm and try and go back home uh, with you. We just need to get out of here. She tries to go through all the stuff, and all of a sudden she sees the portal. It's like, oh, look, there's me holding up you. Let's get up there and get up really quick. She get, they get up there, and all of a sudden they're captured by Belasco. Yeah, illusions messing with you. I told you, everything that happens, Belasco is aware here. He's got amazing scrying ability, you know, like just anywhere. So, uh, but especially in Limbo, of course. He knows everything that's happening. So anyway, uh, he takes her and he encourages the dark child even more. He, he, first off, he's like, you know, um, oh, cat, you killed Nightcrawler? Well, it's only fitting that you take his place. So he devolves her more into a cat. And she, can, she can't even speak at this point. So she's his personal guard, amongst other things, his spy, whatever. Anyway, um, and with Ileana, fo uh, fosters the dark child more and then makes the second bloodstone. So... Storm sees this. She's like, oh, no, I can't believe this. I, I, I did the best I could. <laughs> but no, unfortunately, it's just it's not enough. So going on to the third issue now, um, Belasco has taken Ileana completely under his his uh, guidance. And he's trying to foster her dark child more and help her to become a true dark child. So a uh, full demon of limbo. Anyway. Uh, she goes off and she's, uh, she's trying to run away from Cat because Cat's like trying to chase her. But Cat, mind you, she's purely instinctual. But when they get up there, she tries to actually have a conversation. She tries like, Iliana, uh, 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 tries to speak, but it just freaks young, um, uh, Iliana out so much that she actually casts a spell on her. The same spell of, you know, ouch, that, um, uh, what's her name? That, that Belasco would typically do on, on, cat. But here, it's very different. Blasco makes her stay. Eliana's not going to make her stay. Cat will never try and communicate with her again. You know, like she throws a pillow at her first and, and Cat just, you know, shreds the system. She's just like, boom. And she's like, oh my god. So she gives the indication that she's been uh, doing this for a very long time. You know, maybe another year or two uh, under his tutelage. Because she's got great power, but she didn't even call upon the magic by name. It was just there for her. So she can cast spells without even using vocal uh, components, which is, <clears throat> we know, that's that's really powerful. So uh, she also starts looking around like, you know, I wish I can get out of here. You know, let me try and cast this, this uh, pentacle of silver that Aurora taught me to cast. And Storm actually shows up in her astral form. She's like, okay, listen, I just need you to have patience. I'm still with you. Just, you know, she's like, no, let me try to escape. She's like, it's not time yet. Please relax. Trust me. And she disappears. She's like, ah, oh, come on. So she tries to do her little pentacle again, tries to get out. It's not working. She's infuriated. And um, she's going to, I think she actually even goes and tries to do the egg corn again. Nope. <laughs> Splat. So she's laying in bed and she sees um, a, uh, a stepping disc appear on the ceiling. She's like, that's weird. Belasco made it so the stepping disc can't come inside of his citadel. And why is that one on the ceiling? It's not doing anybody any good. 
So then she realized that she summoned it. And then she's making it come closer to her. So not only can she summon these things, she can completely control them, actually make them move along surfaces. So that's when she realizes that this is not her magic. This is her mutant ability. Her mutant ability is to control these stepping discs. Being in limbo, man, it does something for you. So um, she transfers the whole bed through limbo. And all of a sudden, New Mutants issue number, 15, uh, number 14 kind of shows up here. And uh, the New Mutants show up and they come out of this car. And you have to go and uh, look at that issue uh, to, to figure out exactly why this happened. But anyway... Um, you know, boom, they show up and then they disappear again just as fast. And she's like, what's going on? And they're all like, you know, oh, my God, it's, it's Ileana, but she's so young. What's going on? Anyway, Ileana goes and teleports herself again. And she sees that she's up on top of the uh, in the in the main uh, summoning chamber of Belasco. And different versions of Storm are fighting him, younger versions and everything. <clears throat> and they're actually doing a good job of kicking his butt. So she realizes that she must have transferred through uh, not just space, but time as well. So this version of Storm actually winds up killing Belasco. It's like, oh, crap. So she's like, yeah. But as it turns out, it was all just a plan of Belasco. Again, everything that happens in here, he knows. And he is immortal, granted immortality by the Elder Gods. He cannot die, except by very specific magical means. And even then. So, um... So she actually just festers the dark child in her even more. So this is basically an origin story for old woman Ororo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, anyway, uh, Belasco starts, you know, showing like, hey, you know, like all this, you know, great power. Listen, you're going to help me out. Here's this old woman storm and whatnot. Here's what's actually going to happen. OK, you uh, we are eventually going to sacrifice her in order to get the power even greater, okay? And you know, we're going to we're going to make more bloodstones, we're going to fill up that pentagram, and then we're going to we're going to go and invade the earth and realm together, you and me, you as my dark child, all right? But we're going to we're going to use Storm as a sacrifice. She won't join me, so this is what we're going to do. So <clears throat> Eliana does something that really taints her innocence a lot. She sees Storm smile at her, and she realizes that this is what Storm was was grooming her for, was allowing her to be groomed for. Ileana pulls out her dagger, and she kills Storm. Yeah, messed up, right? So she kills Storm. This way, there is no sacrifice. It's just a murder. So now, Belasco is infuriated. He's infuriated. He's like, you will pay for this. And we're going to switch over to the final issue, issue number four. And we're going to see that Belasco's like, I'm going to make you suffer for everything that you did. How dare you do this? They relive what just happened. So she said, he says, listen, <clears throat> you can run, you can hide. I want you to suffer, but I'm going to make you suffer, girl. You made a very, very poor choice now. So she stepping discs her butt out of there. She goes back. She sees like her, her parents and they're like, oh, you know, father's like, I disapprove. And she's like, no, all that stuff that a little girl would dream as her worst possible fears, right? Uh, parental disapproval, you know? So all these crazy things, like these demons, you know, seem to be attacking her. They're yelling. It's Belasco's voice. They're yelling through her friends as demons attacking, as undead demons attacking, and just crazy stuff. So she gets to this one point where she sees that um, that she's going to have to do this stuff on her own. She she winds up getting uh, teleported back to, to Belasco. He sucks out another uh, bloodstone from her and then sends her packing on her way again. Just like, I'm going to mess with you again for a really long time until I can get that fourth and fifth bloodstone from you. So uh, she's out and she's like, okay, uh, it turns out that I'm over by Aurora's tree in her garden, her sanctum. So she tries forever to make another egg corn and she's actually draining life from this old oak and up until the point where it actually dies and she's still not successful. So with the energy left in her, she's like, I don't know why I'm not successful. And she's like, wait, Aurora is always, why did it take so long? I killed this poor tree for nothing. She says Aurora was always successful because she was all about life. And even the magic that she did, a future evil dark child version of myself tried to kill her, you know, put a wrapped a, rip, a whip around her neck and she turned it into a bed of roses. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like making it attack her back. She was always about peace and tranquility and forgiveness. So I don't have that in me. I've got vengeance and revenge inside of me. So thus, 
I have to think of something more practical for me. And that's when she forms her soul sword. And it was the easiest thing. She's like, I could have done this uh, ages ago. Why didn't I? Well, you were young and immature. It's not your fault. So anyway, she forms her soul sword for the first time. So now she's going to go up and she's going to get in the face of Belasco. Now, Belasco actually has these uh, statues set up of Kazar and Shauna and all this stuff. He wants Shauna to be his new wife. He actually wanted that way back in issue number 12 of... Uh, uh, Kazar the, the Savage. Now we're up to issue number 29, and you can actually go back and check out those issues. I will probably not be reviewing those, but this is actually where you see that there's this one sword that can actually hurt him, and you realize that he is missing his right arm. That's actually the issue. It's like, who was reading Kazar? You know what I'm saying? So they gave the idea that, yeah, this sword can actually kill him, or at least can take away body parts from him that he can't regrow at this point. And he can come back from so much damage, but not from this. So anyway, uh, Ileana shows up and she's like, yeah, it's time to play. And he, she's even able to hurt um, Sim, which is like, wow, insane. Anyway, Belasco is like, you know, he's terrified. He's trying to fight. He's got no chance. And she's just, she turns Dark Child on him and she's about to kill him. She's about to cut him down and he knows it. He knows he's toast, but she holds back. She actually withdraws. She holds her hand and he's just like, what? You're not going to kill me? You fool! This was actually... so. Remember, this was all a part of his plan. He was planning on using her rage to strike him down, just like Storm did. And Eliana showed up and saw that's how... That's one of the main ways that Storm fell, and one of the reasons why Belasco was able to use her. So she was smart enough to not fall for the same trick. Uh, so Storm actually had obviously had some kind of an influence on where and when she was going to arrive to see that battle when she was younger using magic and the storm, especially against um, Belasco. So Eliana learned from someone else's mistake. The absolute best thing that you can ho ever hope for in a kid is that they learn from someone else's mistake instead of just their own. So because you get an awful lot of bumps and bruises that way. So anyway, um uh, Belasco is infuriated, but she's like, get out of here. And he does. He leaves. And she takes what's left of the locket with three parts of herself in it, basically. And she goes out to the altar and she um, she uses her own stepping disc and she is able to go back to Earth. Uh, well, actually, but more specifically, she goes back to that time and place, that moment, and she reaches up and she lets Kitty grab her arms. And that's when she gets pulled out. And everybody's like, oh, my God. You know, and just like, that's the story. That's the story. That's what had happened. So a story of great tragedy, great loss. This poor little six, almost seven year old girl who had to suffer for seven years, seven years in limbo, being hunted, tortured, having her soul ripped out and manipulated and only some of it brought back, you know, until she could rejuvenate some of that soul, like just absolutely horrid conditions. So whenever you, you see a, a, an Ileana Rasputin story or a story with magic in it, always remember whenever you're sitting there thinking, she's too mean, she's too this, she's too that, look at what she went through. <laughs> she's, she's earned being that mean. She's earned being that savage. She's earned being that relentless because that's what she knows. So yeah, anyway, um, again, check out Magic Explained in a minute. And this was my spotlight and story. Guys, I will eventually be, as I said, talking about Belasco. We are going to start working on a road towards uh, Inferno because uh, just you talk to anybody. You talk to anybody my age. If you're you know younger, you will learn that, oh, dude, is an actual uh, proper terminology in, in English, American English, whatever, because... They will say, you know, you'll say, hey, uh, tell me about Inferno, the storyline called Inferno. You ever hear about it? Like, oh, dude, you're in for a treat. Yeah. <laughs> and very few people, I think, can properly explain it. But we're going to attempt here at Comic Book University. Anyway, enough patting myself on the back. Guys, this was a story. Um, go and make sure that you can try and find the, the you could probably find the four issues themselves. If they are too expensive for you, they probably shouldn't be. Not until the movie comes out. But if you can find the four issues by themselves, grab them. They're, they're in my opinion, they're glorious. Worst case, get the trade paperback, all right? And links to, to as such below. If you don't have a local comic book store near you or they're incapable of getting it, link below in the description. Anyway, guys, that's it for me. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.